Let's go back into the word uh, now, and uh, we will go in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, as we are going every Sunday. It's a very important letter, and uh, somebody left the candy. <laughs> uh, uh, there was one story, like one preacher didn't know how to stop uh, sermons, and they told, give him a candy. Uh, and every time he has a candy in a pocket, and when the candy is gone, that means he needs to finish the, the sermon. But one day he had a button in a, <laughs> among candies. He put a button and then he preached for three hours. <laughs> okay, my wife is in the first row. She can, uh, I, after 20 minutes, she can show me. <laughs> I'm missing brother John Field. When he is here, he watched me like that <laughs> after 25 minutes when I go. We will go in the first Corinthians. This is a very important letter, a uh, rich letter. Word of God is full, is, is, uh, is amazing. And... Uh, and we would like to uh, study while I'm preparing these sermons. I never preach in my 30 years uh, uh, through the First Corinthians. A lot of good stuff is here. A lot of important topics that uh, uh, we have uh, for even today. And I would like to uh, give some introduction. As you know, the Corinth was very important, big city, prosperous city. And uh, this city was famous for business, but also was famous for idolatry. They have a lot of temples there, uh, and a lot of uh, people wanted to go into the Corinth. Unfortunately, the Corinth was uh, famous not only for a big temple, but also for the prostitution, for parties, for, uh, and it was very expensive. And there was a phrase, not every man can afford to go to Corinth, because that was like a, like a New York of, the, of that days. Uh, and, uh, and even Paul in Book of Acts, when he's supposed to go in that city to preach there, he was thinking and he was a little bit got afraid to enter the city, but God encouraged him and told him, go and preach, I will be with you, I have my people there. And the church was formed, uh, and after Paul, there was uh, another man, Apollos, who was teaching there. After Apollos, there were other people who, was, uh, who were in, a, in uh, raising uh, uh, the church there, but uh, yeah, thank you, Luis. But uh, uh, suddenly in the church, there are a lot of problems start to come. And, uh, and the Corinthians, the society, start to influence the Christians, influence the church. And, uh, and uh, Apostle Paul heard about that, and he's writing that uh, letter. It's uh, 16 chapters. Name it, every problem that we can think was there. <laughs> but in a nice way, he's explaining uh, uh, the truth, the gospel, and uh, he, he's giving them a good, uh, wise uh, teachings through this, uh, through this letter. Uh, before this letter, uh, we can see that they wrote, we don't know where is that uh, letter, they wrote to, the, to, uh, to Paul and asked him a lot of questions, a lot of questions that they were struggling. Can Christian go to, idol, uh, to the peg, uh, pagan temples? Can Christian uh, get married? Can Christian be single? A lot of questions they have. And then Paul is explaining about the problems that they face, like divisions, the sexual immorality, uh, the, 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 the disorder or chaos in a church services with the, with the spiritual gifts. Then he was explaining them as well, the doctrinal uh, issues like resurrection. Old chapter 15 is talking about resurrection. They, some of them didn't believe in resurrection. Chapter 9, he's finishing the sentence that uh, uh, he's finishing the chapter 9. He said, I'm, I, I, str uh, I strike a blow to my body and make it to my slave that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. He's preaching and he's, uh, he's teaching that, that, that he's trying to fight. He's in a spiritual battle. He's doing everything to not to lose the focus and to be a good example. And I think this is very important today in, a, in the 21st century. We live in a Belgrade. It's a similar like a Corinth in the global society. And we have a similar issues and, and temptations and questions that these people in, uh, in Corinth had. Now we will read the chapter 10. And I have uh, four points for, for us this morning. And I will ask somebody to uh, help me to read. Is uh, uh, Ira, can you... Uh, read, turn the Bibles, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. If you don't have a Bible, uh, open your phone or there is some Bibles on the back. But let's uh, uh, try 
to while Ira is reading and then you can focus on the on the text try to see what point Paul want to make to them about self discipline and about commitment to God 1 Corinthians chapter 10 <coughs> I will be reading from uh, English Standard Version. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with uh, most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation he will also provide the way to escape, that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that as an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But If someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. I do not mean your conscience, but his. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of Christ, of me as I am of Christ. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's pray one more time. Heavenly Father, we are praying that you will speak to us through your word, and I'm praying for myself that I can be a useful tool in your hand to deliver the word by your will. We are praying this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the first verse, he said, uh, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the facts that our ancestors, and he is uh, 
reminding them on the events in uh, in uh, in Old Testament, and uh, and he will use he will use the story of uh, Old Testament to to speak them to them and to remind them. And uh, this chapter is full chapter, and I have a uh, four four points and four words that we can easily remember. Okay, are you ready? First word is be careful. Be careful, and. Uh, uh, when uh, uh, I want you to turn to your neighbor and do like this, be careful. Do it immediately. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Uh, 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 <laughs> be careful. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, basically, he told them, "Hey, learn the lesson from the people of Israel, and be careful." Uh, you can see he's uh, the people of Israel were four hundred years in slavery, in bondage in Egypt. God saved them miraculously through the many signs and wonders. And, uh, and he's mentioning, he said, <clears throat> uh, our ancestors were under the cloud and they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into the Moses, the cloud of the sea. They were all have a spiritual food and drink. Uh, they drank from the spiritual uh, uh, rock, which is accompanying them. That is Christ. Uh, he basically uh, reminding the, the, the readers of the history of the, of the people of Israel, how God chose them, how God was with them, how God saved them, how uh, God um, leads them, how God provides for them. Uh, and, uh, and after 400 years of the bondage of slavery, God showed the mercy on them. They were his chosen people. And then you can imagine like what uh, they were going through the Red Sea uh, by night. They have a pillar of the fire who was there to lead them and to protect them. They have a uh, during the day pillar of the cloud uh, of the uh, pillar of the cloud, which is leading them where they should go. God gave them manna. You remember they were 40 years. They got manna, manna word manhu. What is this? <laughs> it was a good uh, full of proteins food that sustained their life for 40 years. They're, even the clothes didn't destroy for 40 years. You can imagine which kind of this, <laughs> like a quality he had. God was with them. God lead them. God provide them. God save them. God give them a hope of the promised land, land as well. But despite all, all of these benefits, despite of the, all of the liberties that God gave them, they were uh, uh, disobedient to God. And, and, and he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, all, all of these proofs of God's presence in their life, nevertheless, he was not pleased with most of them and their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Uh, uh, the old generation didn't enter in a promised land because they didn't trust, they didn't believe to God. They remember when the Moses sent the 12 spies in a promised land, they came back and they said, oh, this is a big city, they are big people. Uh, we will never conquer them. And only how many of them uh, believe that God can uh, help them? Two of them. And their names were Joshua and Caleb. And Caleb. And, and it was very interesting. They have a perspective of big God. When you have a, a perspective of big God, every problem looks small. When you have a perspective of small God and believe in small God, every problem is bigger. Bigger than, uh, and then you are paralyzed, you're full of fear, and, and all of these ten say, oh, it's impossible. Uh, you see, the, the, they carry the fruits like a grape. The two of them take, take one grape. You said, this is a terror, we cannot. But Joshua and Caleb said, God is with us, God promised us. They have a faith in big God. And sometimes in our lives, brothers and sisters, we uh, lose our vision of our God as a big God. And then the problems came into our lives, and then we start to panic. We are full of fear. We are paralyzed. And then somebody, sometimes God through the word, through teachings, through church, through somebody encourage you that you should have a vision of big God and, uh, and to see problem from his perspectives. Amen. Amen. And then uh, uh, he's, uh, he's mentioning here in a, uh, he's using the word. He said they were baptized into the Moses. This is the Greek word baptizo, which means immerse. Uh, next Sunday we will we will do that in a lot of water immersion, and Paul basically speaks to the to the Israel that 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 they were immersed in God's leadership by God's chosen person Moses. God gave them a leader as well, and in these forty years where they were in desert, 
they need only seven days to enter in promised land, but because of this, they're disobedient, they were going 40 years in the desert, an old generation died, and then the new generation with the leadership of Joseph and Caleb, they entered the, the promised land. Uh, God provided them uh, uh, water, and uh, he's mentioning that that rock was Christ. And uh, if you can remember in John chapter 7, on that celebration of tabernacles, where they were celebrating the last day of the feast, they were pouring a lot of water. They were remembering how God provided them with water through the rock. And Jesus shouted, and he said, is everybody thirst? Come to me, and I will give you uh, the eternal water. I will give you the water which will become a fresh spring in, in your life. Which means, he said, I am that rock. I am giving the true meaning and satisfaction if you believe in me. But basically, uh, uh, God gave them everything, but they didn't finish well. They were disobedient, and God punished them. And God was not pleased with with them. Uh, uh, and that is very, very interesting to see uh, what are the three things that God had a problem that Paul is mentioning here that people of Israel have an issue with, that maybe Corinthians had the issue with, and maybe today us have an issue with. You see, the first thing that he's mentioning here is idolatry. idolatry. From the verse 6, he said, all of this uh, is an example to us. And he said, the verse 7, do not be idolaters, as some of them were. It's written, the people sat down and eat and drink and got up in indulgence of, how do you say that in, uh, uh, in English? Uh, riverly or uh, uh, in NIV. Uh, they start to dance uh, uh, and uh, have uh, orgies, orgies. Uh, and they drink and they make uh, orgies, they make uh, parties. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, Paul is mentioning, he said, we should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 were, were died. We should not test Christ. And some of them, they were killed by the snakes. Do not grumble. And some of them, didn't. they were killed by the destroying angels. And verse 11, he said, these things happen to them as example and were written down as warning to us to whom the culmination of the ages will come. He basically want to say everything what is written is, is, is a good example for us that we can understand what is the, the point. Apostle Paul in Romans 15, 4, he said the similar thing. He said, for everything which is written in the past has written to teach us said, so that through the endurance through the, in the scriptures and encouragement they can provide, we might have hope. Everything is what is written in Old Testament is, is, is good for teaching us today. Everything what is a Bible is to teach us that we can have endurance and through endurance that we can have the, the hope. The three things. First problem that they have idolatry. After 40 days of seeing a lot of God's miracle, they went through the Red Sea. They have this fights with the, with the Pharaoh. Moses was in the Mount Sinai. And after 40 days, the people of Israel say, Aaron, can you make us one God or gods? We just wanted to worship. And Aaron took the gold uh, and everything from the people of Israel. And he mailed in golden calf. You remember that? And they said, here is your gods who saved you from Israel, <laughs> from Egypt. Here is your God. Instead of focusing on, on, on the God or Yahweh, God who really saved them, they immediately after 40 days forget everything and they start to worship the idol golden calf and not only that but they the day after they start to make a parties sexual events they it made chaos and god and, and god told to moses go down now because they they forget uh, forget about me today we don't have maybe in some uh, countries like in india and other places Still, people are worshiping different idols as a religion, a religious object. But today, uh, I saw the, the uh, explanation and phrase, what is the idol? And uh, I found one good uh, uh, definition. Idol is the object of extreme devotion. Idol, uh, idol is the object of this extreme devotion. Today, in a spiritual sense, we Christians, we need to be careful that we don't have idols into our lives. Amen? 
Anything what became more important than God can be your idol. What consume our thoughts, actions, and resources, and it's not God, can be our idol. Anything that take God's place in our life in order to give us fulfillment, satisfaction, significance, security, can become idol in your life. The question for all of us, what can compete with our God in our lives? What can be the idol? Things, money, success, kids, family, work, company, social media, everything can take number one in your life. And this can be, unfortunately, the, the idol, which can take you straight like the people of Israel. They start to worship other idols. And they, they went off the focus from God. In Luke chapter 8, 14, uh, Jesus is uh, speaking about parable of the sower. And uh, there is one seed, fe- uh, eight, 14 verse, chapter 8. The seed that fell among thorns stand for do- those who hear as they, are, they go on their way and they are choked by life worries, riches, and pleasures and they don't not mature he said the seed went in a good soil but these issues life worries riches and pleasures take them off take the energy and the seed couldn't couldn't grow and show the the result what compete with the seed in our life in first john chapter 2 john is very clear he said do not have the love for the world on anything in the world if anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything is, is in the world is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and des- desires passed away, but ne- whoever does the will of God will live forever. In the book of Revelation, there is a lot of warnings uh, to, uh, for some churches. And, 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 and Jesus is speaking to some church and said, I have one thing against you. You have forsaken the first love, the love that you, that you have. Second uh, Timothy 3, Apostle Paul tell to, to his uh, uh, assistant Timothy, he said, you should know this Timothy. Chapter 3, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. In the last days, there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boasting and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to the parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love the pleasures rather than God. They will act religiously, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from the people like that. Is this description the similar what we see today? The question for us, they find other gods instead of God who saved them. And I think sometimes in our lives, God saved us through the miracle. God lead us through the Holy Spirit and His scriptures. God gave us everything. We have all benefits. But sometimes... We want to choose other idols. We want to worship something else. And then we cannot finish well. How many churches, unfortunately, are doing that? Started well, but they didn't finish well. Second problem that he's mentioning here, that they were involved in sexual immorality. And uh, people said, sit down, eat and drink and indulge in, uh, uh, in, uh, in orgies. Another translation. They started to compromise. In, in Numbers chapter 25, also you can see that Moab women attracted the people of Israel and God punished them. And the third problem that they have, they were grumbling and complaining. Paul is using, he said, do not test Christ. He's, he's using, he said, you remember in Numbers 21, they were grumbling against God and Moses. They complained and God sent the snakes. And you remember that story when Moses, God told to Moses, made the stake uh, on the, how do you call it, that metal? Uh, bakar, how do you call it? Uh, bronze. Yes, bronze snake. 
and everybody who see that snake and uh, with and believe uh, will be cured which is a, which was a picture of Jesus and John uh, Jesus is using that in John chapter 3 verse 15 and 2 million people died in the desert only two of them entered the promised land so the first point is be careful what Paul is writing to them them telling be careful don't worship idols don't complain and grumbling and don't be involved in sexual immorality and in Corinth it was a big problem because they have a temple of Aphrodite on the hill thousands of prostitutes there it was a big city with a, with a lot of temptations so that is the first point be careful and I think that all of us we need to be careful the world around us is promoting pleasures lust for eyes and that sometimes this Corinth can influence us the Corinth culture can influence the church and sometimes we can cross the boundaries and we can forget who is God and who we are so uh, uh, if we want to be a bless as individuals if we want to be a bless as a church we need to be careful <laughs> we need to be careful and with being without compromise and, uh, and, 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 and just worship God and forget other things around ourselves, what people are telling us, and just focus on the Word of God. Amen? First point, be careful. Be careful. Second point, which is better, be encouraged. Turn around and say like this, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Uh, 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 Paul is not uh, uh, <laughs> Paul is not leaving Paul is not leaving uh, them in a, with a, with a careful like style. He wants just to encourage them. He knows that they are into the temptations, and life is full of temptations. It's not easy to be a Christian in Corinth. It's not easy to be a Christian in Belgrade. It's not easy to be a Christian everywhere. Yes, we are uh, we are in different world. And, uh, and there is a lot of, uh, lot of uh, temptations. And Paul is starting here uh, 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 in the verse 11, uh, actually verse 12. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. You know, because some of people in Corinth say, hey, we are strong in the Lord, nothing can happen to us. He said, hey, be careful, <laughs> we, can, we can fall, you are you're, you're human, you know. Uh, uh, don't uh, trust yourself. Uh, Paul wants to say there is no place for pride and boasting in yourself. Only we need to trust God. Amen? Sometimes I found myself, hey, I am 30 years in church, Christian. I can, you know, like, I, careful, careful. We trust only God. We are not boasting in ourselves. Okay, we know who we are, but uh, uh, Proverbs 16 say, pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction, hold his spirit before a fall. He wanted to, to immediately to tell them, do not boast in yourself. But then he's giving encouragement uh, uh, and he's reminding that God is faithful. Uh, listen to verse 11, he said, no temptation has overtaken you Except what is common in the mankind. He said, what you have temptations? It's normal. Every Christian, everybody has that temptation. And then he's continuing. He said, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond you can bear. Uh, bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide the way out that you can endure it. This is a few things that he wants to say. He said, basically... God is faithful. God is with you. He will never allow more that you can handle. He will give you the strength to overcome. And what is very important here, he said, he will provide way out his solution, not ours. God will give the way out if we are listening to God, if we are listening to his word, and if we are listening to his direction, how to run away from the temptations. God will provide everything the way out sometimes we pray and say oh god help me help me save me from this situation and then god provide the way out and we don't like it <laughs> we think we are oh, i thought uh, there there is another way i can uh, survive this but it's very clear that god is faithful and that's very encouraging god will never put you in a situation that you cannot bear 
and God will provide the way out. Way out that you can have capacity to get out and run away. And sometimes to run away from temptation, sometimes the way out is that you can uh, lose your legs to run away from temptations. Uh, Joseph uh, ran away from the Potiphar wife. You remember that? And sometimes the way that you can uh, way out is to not go to the places where are not good for you. Yes? Uh, uh, sometimes you need to change the channel. Sometimes you need to avoid places to go which is not good for you. That you will not make provision for the temptations. God is faithful. And if you are praying and asking him, he will provide a way out for the temptation. Amen? In Hebrews 4, uh, uh, 14 to 16, uh, see what the, the author is writing. He said, Therefore, since we have a great, great priest who has ascended into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. He said, we have a high priest who understands us. Let us then approach the God's grace for help in our time of need. Let us then approach to God's grace to help us in our time of need. Uh, and I think that's very important to understand. Jesus understands you when you're going through something. And he is asking you to approach his throne of grace confidently without any restrictions. Approach to his throne and ask him, God, give me strength. Give me a way out from this situation. And maybe this morning you're, you came with some temptation in your life. Maybe in this morning you came with some problem in your life. There is a way out. Amen. There is a way. God uh, will find a way out. Maybe you don't see it now, but God has a plan. He is faithful. Amen. He's, and He will provide the way out. Way out from your, from your problems. Martin Luther said, You cannot keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. You don't keep the devil from suggesting the thoughts, but you can choose not to dwell on act or act on them. Martin Luther said, we have all bad thoughts, but don't allow them to make a nest into your hair. So be encouraged. And Paul, he said, God is faithful. God is with you. He will provide the way out. Just trust him. It's not easy to be Christian in Corinth. A lot of temptation. It's not easy to be a Christian in Belgrade. A lot of temptation. But trust God. And he will be with you. Amen. The third word, and we need to slowly finish. It's, and uh, I will not spend too much time now on the third and fourth. Be committed. Um, be committed. And this is the, the, you need to say be committed with this sign. Be committed. <laughs> Turn around and say be committed. <laughs> be committed. Uh, 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 in the worst be committed. In verse 14, he said, Dear friends, flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. He's inviting, inviting them to flee. And basically, in those times, there was a th different situation. There was a lot of these pagan temples. And sometimes they opened the restaurants there. And you can, uh, friends, invite you and say, Hey, Jane, come. Uh, we will celebrate uh, uh, the pagan this and that. And we will have a meal there. And during the meal there, there is a priest. They are putting sacrifices. They are pray, praying to the pagan gods. And some Christians went there. And Paul, uh, and, and they asked him, what, what about that? And Paul said, don't go there. Don't, you cannot worship the demons. He's using three times the word demons here. He basically worshiped these pagan gods. It's, it's calling, it's a devil act. And he basically told them, don't go there. If they worshiping and praying to some deities, it's not God, you only need to worship God. And he basically using the story of, of Lord's Supper, and he said, we are sharing the, the, the cup, we are sharing the bread, you have communion with Christ, and if you have communion and unity with Christ, you cannot be in union with the pagan gods and, and, and demons. Don't go there. You cannot live on a different lives, different uh, worlds. Either you're, you're focusing on Christ 
and worshiping God, or either you're not doing that. And basically, he is challenging them to make clear commitment, to remind them to avoid situations like that, and just to worship, to worship God. And he's using a very strong words. He said, are, are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than God? You cannot play games with God. Either you're f- fellowship with him, worshiping him, or you're worshiping something else. That's what Paul wanted to tell them and wanted to encourage them not to go to that places. And, and I know we are living in a different world. But still, Christians are struggling sometimes with the question of astrology, with a lot of other issues, yeah? Uh, meditating during the yoga and a lot of other things that maybe look so that's not, you know, like... But there are other issues here that in our centuries, in our society, which can take us into the into direction which is not good. So basically, he uh, want to challenge them and tell them, be committed. And, uh, and I think uh, this is very important that we can understand that we cannot have one foot in the world and one foot following Jesus. You must focus on Christ fully. And sometimes we want to build that balance, but that's not possible. Either you're Christian, either you're not Christian. You cannot live with one foot in the world and doing other things which are completely against Christ and against God. And in one other foot, we are co- you're coming in church and you think everything is okay. Yeah? And, uh, and uh, sometimes we think, oh, maybe this is... Uh, Christians should not uh, watch astrology. Sorry. That's, uh, you know, like the other things that Christian people should not, should not do. And the fourth word, uh, word and this is, we will we'll finish, is be wise. Put a finger here and turn around and say, be wise, be wise. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> be wise. That is what uh, we need. Nada, be wise. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, in, 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 in a verse 23 to 31, he's talking about some gray areas in the church, in the Corinth. And there are some gray areas in life and in Christianity today that the Bible is not concretely clear and give us a freedom to, to discuss, like uh, how we should dress during the service, how we should do the worship, uh, can we have a glass of wine or, or something like that. Uh, and, and basically, Paul is trying to say, you are free, but you need to be wise. You need to be smart because you, uh, your, your decisions needs to be uh, uh, guided by love in these gray areas. And unfortunately, in the church history and in the past, a lot of families and a lot of churches divided because of this gray area. Because they make gr- uh, some thoughts about gray areas as a uh, law. Like I remember uh, my grandmother told me when the radio came into the uh, last century, a lot of churches said, no radio, radio is like small demons is speaking through radio. <laughs> Nobody should listen to the radio. No, and then churches fight up again. TV, no TV, this is a pre- devil preacher in a house, don't watch TV, etc. And half of the people have a TV, so half of the people did. And we have also some unfortunate division in Serbia here. I don't know how to translate that. Uh, uh, nylon charape. <laughs> nylon charape. How to translate that? Stockings. Huh? Stockings. stockings. Yeah, the stockings. Show, and then half of the church say women should have that stocking. And some of them say no. The church divide because of that. And unfortunately, this is the 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 the, the gray areas. Uh, we need to have a uh, wisdom from God. And uh, what Paul said here. Uh, you have a freedom, but things before you act how you will use your freedom, because you can be a stumbling block for somebody. Verse 23, 24. I have the right to do anything, you say. Because some people say, oh, we are free, we can do everything. I can go to do anything, because I'm free in Christ. But not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. Which means what Paul wanted to say, whenever you go in a pub or do things, if there is some brother who is, who is alcoholic, you have a right to drink a glass of wine, but don't drink in front of him. Because you love him and you want to help him and support him. 
Be careful where you go and how you show off. Because you need to ask yourself, is this constructive? Is this encouraging for the, for the others? And is this good platform for the gospel to, to be in advantage, to be preached? And then he's giving three scenarios. He's giving first scenario, we already talked about that, eating in temple. And he said, don't go there. But then he's asking, uh, the, giving scenario, buying meat in a marketplace. Because all of these priests who, 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 who put a lot of meat for sacrifice, uh, they gave them to the priest. A lot of priests opened the butcher shops <laughs> in the city because they have a lot of meat. Uh, they, they don't need a lot of meat. And they were selling that on a marketplace. And then Christians ask, should I buy uh, like uh, this meat on a butcher place? Even we know that the priest, he, Paul he said, buy it. You have a freedom to buy it. Then they ask him, can I go if the friend invite me for dinner and his unbelieving friend and he and I eat meat with them and they don't mention this is from the pagan altar. Paul, he said, you have freedom to eat. But if they mention and say, this meat is sacrificed in the name of the te- uh, God, pagan God, this and this, Paul is suggesting don't eat because of their conscience, because they need to see that you're different uh, as a Christian than pagans. And that's very, very important to, to understand, which means uh, all of us, uh, uh, we need to ask three questions before we enter in these gray areas. First question, and he said, the question that we need to ask ourselves, and we will put the questions here, do this action give glory to God? What I'm doing now, this, is this giving glory to God? Is this biblical? Second question, do this build the church of God? If I'm doing something or we are doing something, is this edifying, encouraging brothers and sisters or this is discouraging them? And the third question, do this encourage unsafe people to believe? Do I lose my testimony if I'm doing that or, doing, or, or going somewhere which Christians should maybe not or be, should be there? Or additional question we can ask, before we enter in this gray area, for example, how to dress, how to put makeup, how to, where to go, what to do, how to spend our money. Uh, we can ask a few questions additionally. Is this a sin? Do this edify me? Do this negatively influence fellow believers? Do this affect my testimony to non-believer? That's very important. Do this affect my testimony? Is this against my conscience? And the, f- uh, the fifth question I had, have I asked mature believers for advice? Because sometimes, uh, wherever you don't know where to go, sh- where you should go, you should ask a mature believers for advice. Or you should ask your wife or your husband <laughs> uh, for advice, because th- I think that's, that's very important to, to mention. And Paul is finishing, he said, remember, he said uh, uh, with the verse one, he said um, in, uh, in uh, chapter 11, he said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. That's the true discipleship. Christ is our ultimate example. Paul is following Christ. He's inviting them to follow Paul's example. That's the discipleship, which means he started with the bad example of the people of Israel, but he's finishing with the good example of Christ and good example of himself. This is the four words I wanted to mention you this morning, and sorry I took a little bit longer to explain. It's a big chapter. First word, be careful. Be careful. Uh, be, be careful and don't have any idols than God. Don't be involved in this sexual culture and don't grumbling and complain against God and against God's people. That's, I think, very important to understand. I met a lot of Christians who... Oh, I, uh, this Christian uh, uh, discouraged me, this Christian. I said, focus on God, focus on God. And then you can accept, when you are focusing on perfect God, you can accept unperfect, our unperfectness of the brothers and sisters and yourselves as well. Be careful. We have all benefits. God saved us. God gave us everything. Holy Spirit, Word of God, church, promises. We will have a promised land in eternity as well. But we need to finish well. We need to finish well and we need to use our benefits, not for these bad things, for evil desires, but to glorify God. Second, be encouraged. Whatever in which temptation you are, there is a way out. 
because God is faithful. Amen. Listen him. Listen what he advise you. What he advise you. Be committed. Be with two foot and one place in Christ. Don't walk one foot in the world. You want to please and then one foot in. You know, you need to be committed. You cannot play with God. God doesn't like that. And the fourth thing, be wise. Whatever you do, is this edifying others? Whatever you do in gray areas where Bible is not clear, let love be your clear motivation. Uh, and that you can ask all of these questions before you do something. Amen. 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 Uh, let's stand up and we will pray and I will invite Ben, ben to, uh, uh, and worship team to come to, to lead us. Uh, this is very important, uh, especially now uh, where uh, through the media and through internet, uh, the world is more close to us than before. So that we can, uh, that we can be committed Christians because God wants to use committed Christians and that we can be focused to him. And w- what Paul said here, that everything you're eating or not eating, do everything for the glory of God. Uh, our lives, our words need to give a glory to our God, our Father, who saved us. Amen. And, uh, and uh, we always uh, we need to uh, remind ourselves before, before we do anything or we, before we make some decisions which are not in line with his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, chapter. Uh, thank you for people of Israel. Thank you that you are warning us to be careful. And uh, thank you that you're encouraging us that you are faithful God who provides way, da- way out. Thank you that you are encouraging us to be careful, to be committed, to be encouraged, and also to be wise. How we live a life as a Christian. There is a lot of gray areas where we need your wisdom. We need to be smart and we need to be led by love. Because it's not only about me, it's about others as well. That our actions, our words are influencing others around ourselves. Lord, help us that we can be smart, that with everything what we are doing to give for glory of you, with everything what we are doing that can do for the sake of the gospel that people can be saved. We are praying this in Jesus' name. Amen.